Hello, I'm Karen and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how to make these. Um, in my title I've put chair gliders slash chair socks because when I first came across them they was actually called chair socks but when I went to go and look for them another time <laughs> um, when I typed in chair socks into the internet I got socks for people to lounge around in and I got some of these so um but so what I've done is I've 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 sat and thought about these and the very first ones that I saw I didn't really like them just because they were just a little bit wild and out of my comfort zone because the, the brown ones are um are what I've made for my chairs because I've got brown chairs I didn't want them to stand out and um I just thought I'd, what I did is I experimented I put them on my chairs and I thought I'll see how long it takes for anybody to notice um some people it took over a week um, but my sister, she noticed straight away. She was, she was like, "Oh my gosh!" But this is why. If you, if you listen, this is the chair without. Okay, and this is a chair with. And it does, in my opinion, they make the chairs glide nicely. They've got a nice smooth um, feeling across the floor. And I've, I've just got a wooden chair on tiled floors. Um, and I just, I just really don't like that sound of it grating across the floor. So, but the thing is, is I couldn't get my chair onto the video and do everything. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm experiment, I'm experimenting. I'm sharing with you with two different sizes. I've got a can of mousse and I've got a can of deodorant. And this is one that I've made. These are just made out of normal, um, just the double knitting baby yarn. And so when I've made them they'll fit nicely onto there. But this particular one, if I just take this back off, you can see this one is actually, if there, look, if I put them down, you can see this one's actually fatter. And that's because this one's been stretched to fit over this one. They were still both the same size in the beginning, but once it's been stretched, you can't undo that stretchiness. It's, it's that's it, it's done. So that's what that's the difference. I thought you could be able to see, and so that when you've got them, because like on my chairs, I've actually got narrower legs at the front, and I've got bigger ones at the back, and also my back legs are square, and my front legs are round, and they sort of they go up in like loop, loop, <laughs> little pretty shapes at the front. So um, just so that you know the sizes. And get all this interesting information out of the way first, just for all those people that ask. Um, so the the smaller one is four and a half inches, and the larger one is well, it's just over five and a half inches. Looks up there, five and five and a half plus one more eighth. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. So. These are to make these, so I've made them so that they'll fit my chairs, and I think that they'll fit like the average chair. I'm going to put those out of my way. Um, and I'll so say you can make them in double knit baby yarn if you want to, that's what they look like, like that. And but I'm doing, I'm going to crochet up in the lilac just because it's easier to see the stitching. And also, when I was making mine, um. I wanted to have this the stretch of them going round, but I also wanted to stop them from going baggy at the top. So I've done this little design at the top just to make sure that they don't, because I, I did try it with slip stitching, but then it made them too tight and they wouldn't actually stretch very nicely over the chair. Um, so that's my brown one. So this is what I want labels. <clears throat> my brown ones are made with... Um, this premium Aran yarn, which actually does say for you to use a five millimeter hook or a six in the UK. And the Robin Bonnie Babe, which is what I'm going to be using for the video, which is the, this is a lilac version, that actually says for you to use a three and a half to a four and a half millimeter hook. Now, as we established in my other videos, my old fashioned number four millimeter hook is the same size as a modern four and a half. And it didn't matter whether I used the Bonnie Babe or the Aran, because they're both Aran based yarns anyway, um, they came out the same size. Yeah, 
it's not just showing you <laughs> okay so um and put that out of the way and we shall begin it's only oh i've got a knot in my yarn there i'm not even going to attempt to get rid of that one it's only actually um 10 rounds all together to do it so it won't take us long maybe about 15 minutes okay so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to begin with a magic circle on mine so we're just going to do this slowly just in case those are people that are, are still not with it that's my tension. This is where I get my tension. Where you get your tension or how you hold your yarn, that's um, up to you. <laughs> then I use my front two fingers. So my yarn goes over. So it's going actually over everything. And then I go over again. Get the hook, point it down, go underneath the first strand, which is that's the tail end. And catch hold of the second strand. And I twist. And just do you just do a chain one just to hold it into place now if you can't do that and you want to do a chain of two and work into the beginning chain to do your to start your rounds that's perfectly fine um you'll still get a nice finish but it's just that this just gives you gives you a nice circle at the bottom that's all really okay but they're going to be at the bottom <laughs> no one's going to see them anyway um Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to work, I'm working in single crochet to begin with, which is um, a single crochet in America and a double in UK. I'm going to work eight into my circle. That's one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, and eight. Then the tail end, I'm just going to gently pull on that, get my tension correct with my yarn again. And I'm going to, I know I haven't done it properly, but that's okay, because I just want to slip stitch into the first single crochet or first double crochet to join. And it looks like I split my yarn, so I'm going to do that again. And slip stitch to join. Okay, and then you can pull the tail end tighter. Now we're going to chain one. I'm not working in the same space, I'm working not in this bit here, I'm working the next stitch along, and we're going to work two stitches, so it's two single crochet or two double crochet in each stitch around, which will give us a total of 16. So I've already done one into there, and that's two. Four. Six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. And this last stitch here is actually a slip stitch that we, we made when we slip stitched before we did our chain one. So we're going to just work two in there. That gives us our 16. <clears throat> then we, we ignore the, this, this, when you look at your work, you've got your little Vs that you can see at the top. We ignore the next one because that was the actual chain stitch. And we want to work into the next two loops because that's our first single crochet or our first double crochet. We slip stitch to join okay and now we're going to chain one and from this round we're going to actually um now start working in half double crochet which would be a, a half treble crochet in the uk so we're wrapping over going through wrapping over our yarn pulling through and pulling through all three that's our half double crochet and we're just going to do one in each stitch all the way around so we have a total of 16 so that's one two three four five six 
seven, eight, nine, you see the curve coming, ten, eleven, twelve, <clears throat> sorry, thirteen, Fourteen, fifteen, and into that slip stitch one is the last one is sixteen then you look at your work again you'll see you've got your little v's we ignore the chaining one and we slip stitch into the first half double crochet or half treble crochet to join and as we can see it's, it's already started to produce a little curve and I'm just going to pull this tail through this side because I like to sew in on the outside. You, it's your choice of how you want to do your sewing in. You can tuck it in as you go along. Okay, so that's one, two, three, uh, three rounds. So we're on round four, so we chain one. And then we're going to half double crochet in each stitch, not into this beginning one that we've worked up from, but into the next one along. And we're working 16 again, so that's one two, three, four, five, six, seven, <clears throat> eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and the 16th stitch is in the slip stitch space. Okay, we ignore the chain one and we're working into the top of the first half double crochet because you can see the first half double crochet there and you can see these two loops there they belong to that first stitch and we slip stitch to join okay so we've got one two three four rounds this is round five chain one and do the same again Sing, um, half double crochet or half treble crochet in each stitch around so that's one two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. I just need to just pull my yarn. I'm getting a bit tired there. <laughs> you can't see what I've, what I've just done. I've got my yarn. Um, because I didn't have a teapot, but I've compromised and I've used a bowl because I've got a dancing ball of yarn today. And it works very well, I must say. Right, so there's our chaining up stitch and we want to work into the top of the first half double crochet to join. Okay, so now we've got one, two, three, four, five rounds. Chain one. Same again, don't go there. Go to the next one. And we're half double crocheting all the way around. So that's one, two, three, oh, I had a squeak there, four, five, six, whoops, I didn't feel right, six. Seven, 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve. 13, 14, 15, and 16 stitches into the slip stitch space. And then we ignore the little chain one, which is there, and we slip stitch into the top of our half double crochet or half triple crochet to join. So now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that yeah? One, two, three, four, five, six. Chain one. So this is the seventh round. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, and 16. Ignoring the chain one area, there look, and slip stitching into the top of the first half double crochet or half treble crochet to join. As you notice, look, we've got quite a nice, neat join on this one. Um, if I recall rightly, actually, um, very first announced that as um, a virtually invisible join a few years ago but then I lost the pattern because I had a computer virus and I'd written it straight into my computer. I was devastated with that, especially when someone said, how did you do that? And I'm like, um, I can't remember. <laughs> right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is the eighth round. This is the last round of half double crochet, okay? So we're going to do so we're just half double crochet all the way around so that's one two three four five six seven just need some more yarn Ooh. <laughs> I'm involved <in> moves. <laughs> Did I say I was on seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I did. Seven. So this one's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, and 16. And now we're going to slip stitch together to join. Making sure I've come underneath the top two loops. There. Now this round we're going to change back over to a single crochet. So I'm going to chain one still. And I'm just going to work a single crochet in the tops of all of the half double crochet. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. Now we're going to slip stitch to join in the top of the first half double crochet or the first half treble crochet to join. I'm just going to get myself some yarn for this last round. The last round we do not do a chain one. Okay, what we're going to do is we're actually just going to, where you work, should the, the last your single crochet stitch, we're going to go into the same place because we're going to be single crocheting over the last row of single crochet. Okay, and I'll show you something else that happens here. <laughs> right, so that's one, two, three, four, five, whoops, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. And this is where I'm going to show you what's actually happened because our stitch is right over here. And we've actually still got one more space that we can work into so we can actually work a 17th stitch okay and our first stitch is over there and we want to slip stitch into our first single crochet to join or double crochet if you're in England and I'm just going to just whoops <laughs> I locked the, the can over um just I'm going to just pull this all the way through when you're first looking at your work you can just see it has pulled out this a little bit so it's it's almost giving it a bell shape as you work, but you can just flatten it back down. And because I've still got my tails there, you can actually see, once you've flattened it down, we can actually see there we have a lot of very, very, very delicate thin line. And hold that closer so you can see it. And that's how it'll look. So it's a really, really nice, neat finish. And then we're going to get my... Oh, I've, by the way, I bought another wide-eyed darning needle um well this one is even fatter to be able to cope you know with doing the Aran yarns and also when I was working with the um sugars and babe no it's not sugars and babe <laughs> sugars and cream sugar and cream <laughs> cotton sugar and babe I'm going loopy um when I was working with that I found it really hard to actually sew in my ends with my other needles so I actually bought some more needles so that um, it makes it easier to thread the needle. I'm just going to just tuck that into there like that. And then the top end, I'll thread my needle. It's so much easier with this one. And the point's nice as well. It's not really sharp or anything. I was really pleased with that. I just got them off eBay, by the way, if you're interested in buying them. They weren't expensive. I think it was about £1.20. Um, and that was including postage, you know. I might be mistaken, it might have been a little bit more, but I know I didn't spend hardly any money getting them. There we go. It wasn't an expensive buy. It was very worth it. And there you have it. See, now this one will slot straight onto this particular size, yeah? So, um, oh... I think that's all that I needed to share with you for that, except, oh, no, I'm just going to say, because I've been crocheting, I can see it, so it says 24 minutes. Now, I know I waffled on at the beginning of it, so we take away five, so it takes you about 20 minutes. Well, it did on my video, if you're crocheting on your own, you probably end up going a little bit faster. It doesn't look like that one's quite as long, but I don't know whether that's because I've tried it on. Oh, it is the same look. Just whether that, <laughs> it didn't look quite the same to me. Um, yeah, so it's going to take you about 15 to 20 minutes. Because I'll say, when you're working on the video, you tend to, I tend to be quite, I'm trying to be slower 
especially for the people that are still learning. Um, but also you've not got the same maneuverability because obviously I've got a table in the way. And my table, and so I, it's not the same as like when you're crocheting over your knee. So I, I would say normally these take me about 15 minutes. So if you to make one chair's worth of um, gliders, with its little feet, its little socks, whichever you want to call it, um, will take you about an hour. So if you've got four chairs to do, that's going to take you four hours, six chairs, six hours, okay? And um, I will also say, do you know if you're going to gift this to somebody, um, because I know, this, I know this sounds silly, but you know when they're actually like this and people look at them, they, they actually look a little bit, a bit like a bell, so they might think it's a tree decoration for Christmas. <laughs> so let them know what they're for. You have to tell them that they're, if you want to name them chair socks, it's entirely up to you. If you want to name them chair gliders, it doesn't matter. It's just that I wanted, I'm referring to mine as chair gliders because we would give you one last chance to listen. That's, that's without... And this is with <laughs> okay thank you for watching thank you for liking thank you for subscribing thank you for your thumbs up thank you for all your lovely comments um and bye for now